Hi guys, uh, so this video lecture is an introduction to the essential tropes or forms of figurative language uh, that poets use and of course we're going to see all all authors actually use. Um, just again, the emphasis is that poets are focused on these issues of language. They foreground them in ways that make us pause um, in our reading um, and become self-conscious of language itself. So that now that we've conducted our first close reading of a couple poems, we'll move into the more advanced ways of interpreting and responding to poetry, which has to do with this use of tropes. As you recall from the Eagleton essay, poets more than any other writer foreground language. Poets use language in order to reveal the magical ways in which words express our view of the world. Poets want always to place the emphasis on language as something that is vital and living. Hence, they want to force us to slow down and dwell on the words in order to refresh our ways of seeing how we describe experience. The biggest way that poets do this is by bending and twisting language to make words express new ideas and new meanings. Doing this with language is called troping or figurative language. We know tropes as simile, metaphor, imagery, etc. There are literally hundreds of different types of tropes in human language. However, I want you to be familiar with about eight or so main essential ones. One thing to keep in mind is that we all use tropes in speech and writing every day. We are just generally unaware of it. Poets are just very aware of tropes. They are the tool of their trade. So remember I brought up how there are some learning disabilities in which young people can only recognize literal language or language that we discussed as denotation, the dictionary definition of words. Most of us, however, understand the metaphorical level of language or connotation. In fact, we use language as metaphor and understand the world as such far more than we do on a literal level. Consider, for instance, just a typical dialogue with a classmate you might run into, where you might say, hey, what's up? And your classmate might say, life sucks. I'm drowning in work. I've got an exam coming up. Right now, I'm so behind. And then you might say, chill out, man. You got a handle on this. You know your shit, dude. Everything in this conversation that I just said, which is a typical many conversations, all of it is metaphor. There is nothing literal in the usage of language here at all. If you were to ask someone, what's up? The literal meaning is not how are you feeling, but what is located above your head? And the response that the student might have, that life does not literally form a suction vortex ingesting things in its path. You cannot literally drown for lack of oxygen in your schoolwork. There is nothing about the future in terms of time that is literally coming from somewhere up or ahead. And when you have not been doing your schoolwork, there is literally no spatial place that is existing located behind you. And if you were to say, chill out, your friend would not literally take your advice and sit in a gigantic freezer. If you have a grasp of your schoolwork, you do not literally own some kind of handle as for the last comment, I would have no idea what it would mean to know one's own shit on a literal level. In short, a good way to understand poetry and poetic language is to recognize that the vast majority of language we use every day is metaphorical. Poetry compels us to experience this in a more heightened and organized way. Therefore, the most important trope of all the trope that trumps all tropes is metaphor. Metaphor means any comparison between two unlike things that does not make the comparison explicit. In other words, unlike a simile, a metaphor does not use like or as. This definition might not make it sound like metaphor is the dominant trope of them all, but it is. Why? Because all language 
particularly when it's troped, is metaphor. Think of it this way. We use language to describe the world around us and ourselves in that world. We have no other way to understand and describe things them reality otherwise. However, the words we use, the language, is not the things themselves that we're describing. Words are not the objects and experiences that the words are describing. We use words as a way to say, these words are like those things that we're describing. Think of it this way. The word cat is composed of three letters, C-A-T. A cat, however, is the furry quadruped feline to which we are referring. There is nothing about that furry thing that resembles C-A-T. However, we use cat in order to signify the best we can what it is we are trying to describe. Further, humans have no way to experience the essence of what we encounter in life. We cannot experience catness. In other words, we cannot experience the things of the world without the words and language that come in between to describe it. This is what is the amazing thing about language and why I have this dedicated my life to the study of literary of, of its literary application. Language mediates between us and the world, between us and reality. This is where the word media comes from. Media comes from the word mediate, coming in the middle, which is what language does. It comes in the middle of reality or the world around us. Without that mediation, we would simply be a bundle of primal impulses like most of the animal world. Hence, language creates the reality that we live in. It creates the sense of our civilization, essentially. All scientists agree the single most important facet of human evolution is that at some point, tens of thousands of years ago, humans developed the ability to communicate immense amount of information about themselves and life through language that developed from the noises that we make through speech. The amount of information, in fact, that we can convey in even the simplest sentence is thousands of times more powerful than anything any other animal can communicate. It is this ability of our brains to harness the imagination to utilize language on metaphorical levels that has made us evolve and advance miraculously over the past thousands of years. Okay, so for the next video, we'll go through the, the essential tropes that you need to be familiar with for class. Um, and the first one that we'll look at will be simile. So brace yourselves for a lot of fun with similes.